One of them walked up to me and slapped me. They beat me up. They tore my clothes. They booed me, dragged me. Like about four of them gathered me at the same time. What is my offense? I was recording. It's not up to a minute video. That is the thing that triggers answers at the first place. Because the youth of this Nigeria have no rights for themselves. On Thursday, 26, it happened that that very day I was rushing down to to my PPA place because it's almost late. All of a sudden, the driver that was, I boarded, the policeman have to stop the driver, asking the driver to stop that he want to go to Bega. Immediately, the driver stopped. The, the, the policeman now entered and asked the driver to go directly to the police station. From there, I started asking the policeman for what reason. You stopped me and I parked, waited to enter, and you said I should drive to the police station. So for what? This is how the case started. When I left home to work, rushing life car in front of, after Summit Villa, I met some persons driving with one of my commercial driver as a colleague. So when I asked the man, what is the problem? He says somebody stopped him and said, beggar. She carried him to beggar. Immediately the person entered. He said, let's go to the station. So I packed my vehicle to ask the man, sir, what are your reasons and may I know you? Before I could know, he used his phone to call some persons, some persons added to him, making four, five persons. My own, I was, I have to stand by because the policeman have to discharge us from the vehicle. So I have to stand by the roadside. Since they are on Mufti, because they did not identify themselves, they were just on Mufti. That very day, I was surprised what happened. I have to start, step aside. I started taking record of what is actually happening because they were unknown to me. It was in a long run I discovered these men were police without uniform, no identity, nothing to refuse to show themselves as they are officers. That day, one of them saw me when I was using my phone to record. They arrested me. They seized my phone first of all and took me to the station at Life Camp Junction. So they were dragging with him. I was pleading. They were not on uniform. They wasn't with any form of identification if they are security men or policemen. But when I was asking them, I was pleading that they should not take him to the station. I assume maybe they are policemen. I said we should settle everything here so that the man will go. And he will not, they said no. At the process of talking to them, pleading on, the, the, on behalf of my colleague, the other man, which is the vigilante officer that I, I saw with, after I came back from where they took me to, he went and pulled off my plate number from the vehicle. So the other person went and carried my key because my vehicle was not off. It was loaded with passengers from Karimu to Bega. When I excused my passengers and they went and he went and off my key, my ignition key. My passengers told me that this person have removed your key. I went to him. I said, oh God, this is my vehicle. My vehicle is not the vehicle that you arrested. I'm only pleading on behalf of my colleague. Please, it is my key. Give me my key. The man said, oh, it's your key. I said, okay. That is your vehicle. He said, okay, take your key and move. When I was like going, I discovered that one of the vigilante members that was with them have removed my plate number. Turning to come back, I did not meet any of them there. Knowing that they have raked the man that they arrested, 
that they stopped to, to beggar, they, to carry them to beggar, added to some persons that were there pleading on behalf of the man, including the copper that was passing to his work that day and video the same. I, they asked me if I really want my phone back, I should come to the station. I have to follow them to the station, but I want my phone back. Somebody told me that they told them to the police station. I drove to the police station and parked my vehicle out of the police station because I wasn't arrested. When I was talking to them in the counter, the police, can I have my plate number? They were asking me, is my plate number there? I said yes. When I was like showing them my own plate number, that was when the DPO entered the counter and said, who is there? Who are those people? They said, they are those Tazi drivers. I said, oh, yeah, take them to court, just like that. Later on, when the marshals, he said, I should get to the counter. I went to the counter. They, dro they dragged me to the counter. The, the DPO now, asked me to go to the other of the office. On my way going there, he used a stool seat chair and hit at my back. So I have to run to where the marshals to. They asked us statement, they, we should write statement, we wrote the statement. One of the persons that they arrested too, which is the youth copper, it was the one uh, that they molested again. They were beating him and they dragged him to the extent that they tore his shirt, forced the phone from his hand, and I believe that phone has issue now. Actually, when I got there, they beat me up. They tore my clothes at that spot. They booed me, dragged me side by side as if I was a thief. Like about four of them gathered me at the same time. Initially, before they collected the phone from me, they want a struggle with the phone and the screen of the phone had problem. I actually have to release the phone because I don't want to be injured. That's what happened at the first place. Immediately they saw me. They left the issue they were facing. They now gathered me. My home became another different problem. They tore my clothes and asked me to write a statement about what has happened, they are going to take me to court. I showed them my ID card, I'm serving copper. Look at my ID card, look at where I'm serving. I explained everything to them. The policeman himself told me that he himself has served for many years. So after the many years he has served, this is, where he's, this is his work. So I shouldn't show him my ID card. So I started pleading, please, I am sorry. If the video is a problem, you can actually remove the video from my phone. Just give me back my phone so I can continue. That day, they forced me to write a statement, which I started writing about what happened in the, at the initial stage. I wrote everything line by line. I explained to them that I never knew they were police because none of them was, is with any uniform or anything to identify or cap to show themselves as a policeman. About four of them in that police station, one of them woke up to me and slapped me, began to wipe my back. It was like a joke. I was telling the man that you shouldn't slap me. I, I'm not a criminal. I did not commit any offense. What is my offense? I was recording. It's not up to a minute video. So within a space of one hour, they arrayed me to court which is at Kado Estate Upper Area Court. When we went to the court of law, they took us to the court of law straight, no interview, they did not ask us anything. The woman did not ask only that statement. We wrote she did not listen to her when I was begging, telling, talking to her that madam, I wasn't involved in this situation. I was soliciting on behalf of my colleague. Please give me my plate number, let me go. She said no, and that is how they persecuted us to prison. That we don't have any form of identification. We are charged for public disturbance. 
and traffic offense, of which I'm not guilty. When the court asked, I said I'm not guilty. Truly, I'm not guilty with complete evidence, full evidence. After a long while, I have to call someone after they released the phone to me that was on our way to the court. Uh, by the grace of God, someone came on my behalf, which is a lawyer, and came on my behalf, and he stood for me that day. Because it was opportune to call a close lawyer that is his friend, he solicited, he, he, he defended him, and they grant him bail. The charge against me was that I should pay 250000 naira for videoing. And they charged me that my own offense was that I was videoing and causing obstruction. But for we, that we were not having anybody, the marchers to the prison, with no offense. That they will leave the station. Unfortunately, on my way home with the, ma the, with the lawyer, one of the lawyers, the delegate to know my shorty's house. We had an accident, but well, thank God that nothing actually happened to anybody. But the screen of the vehicle we, my cousin brother came with, break broke that very day. That was how they victimized us. They took us to the prison. We we were there. They detained us for some days, and I went there to the prison. I found out that there are a lot of most persons that are in the prison are people that did nothing. But because they don't have anybody to ask or anybody to stand for them or anybody to talk to fight for them or because they don't have money, that is why they are there. Most persons that met me there and most persons that I met there, if you ask them story, their own their reason of being there, you will shed tears. And I found out that the court that is doing all this is upper court, era upper court. And that is where they took us to, at Kado Estate, NAF, behind NAF Conference Center. All the upper courts are the court that are sentencing people to prison with no, no, no serious offense or no, serious, no offense at all. They will just push you to prison, to serve prison. So after everything, they now, after the court, they say we, we, I will be, I will be discharged with uh, some of five naira, which I paid that very day. It was so terrible, so painful. Since that day, I myself have not, have not uh, recovered myself because I'm having psychological experience in a wrong dimension. Even when I was crying that I did nothing, I did nothing. I don't, I did not even fight, I did not insult anybody. Please, it's just because of humanitarian service that I have, you have involved me in what I'm not supposed to. I did nothing. People were there, witnesses, say, this man did nothing. Even my chairman told them that this man did nothing. They say we must go to prison. So, but after everything, on 16th of September, I was. Uh, my case pers personally was struck out because I have to go to the court with my NYC dress fitted. That's how the case ended. With this that I saw, I knew that the less privileged are suffering in this country. We, the less privileged in this country, we are not all that safe. When the right of the copper is not recognized, Someone that is serving the country, the, 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 his own right is not recognized. We talk about other people. If uh, if I were not a copper, I don't know what would happen. That is the thing that triggers answers at the first place, because the youth of this Nigeria have no right for themselves. You people have to say something about police arresting people to uh, upper era court with no offense and take them to prison. No questioning, nothing, nothing. And the people are there. They are not rich people. All the less privileged are the people that are there. But that same day, at that court, my case was, the other people they arrested us together with, they went to prison. First of all, they did not arrest 
arrested me. I went to solicit for my plate number, which the, one of the vigilantes, the local vigilantes, removed, pull off for my vehicle without a, 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 a question. That was when the DPO dragged me in. She did not listen if I did or I wasn't, I was involved or not. And that was when she used a stool chair and hit on my back. So because she hit that chair on my back, I have no say. Already I'm in their, in their station. <laughs>